the movie show, Movies to Learn From, okay? This is Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. Today we're going to talk about the Laundromat movie. Uh, Netflix is a very interesting movie. And George and I have looked at it. We have a lot to say about this movie. After all, the movies we see should be the movies we learn from. I think that's the, you know, the center of the channel for us. And this is definitely a movie with Meryl Streep and Antonio Banderas and my favorite Gary Oldman uh, and others um, that tries to show us what's going on in the money laundering business. It's after a book. Um, and there are three elements to it, and the three elements are all after the book, and thus, at least in part, they're true. They're romanticized, they're dramatized, but they come off true stories. So, George, um, you know, how did you see this in our quest for movies to learn from? This movie is is based on the Panama paper, which is uh, in 2016. It was revealed that this these attorneys in uh, Panama, Mossack and Fonseca, they were setting up all these uh, shell corporations, right? And and uh, bottom line is, this is based on a true story. I mean, they they the directors and producers have sort of played with the facts a little bit, but the, the basis of this is, is true. The Mossack, Fonseca, these two lawyers in Panama were setting up were basically... Uh, He's covering up for money laundering, and that's why this is called the laundromat because it's it's because uh, it that's what it basically is, uh, you know, money laundering. This is an interesting story because it it shows how the very wealthy are able to con- to get away from paying taxes by by setting up these shell corporations. There are three stories. Um, they're not related except for the fact that they cover situations that are affected by global money laundering, including laundering that was taking place through the, these guys in, in Panama. And um, we, we have to connect them ourselves. And there, this, in some ways, uh, the director um, makes them funny. But it's not really funny if you think about it. Uh, these are situations where people have been profoundly damaged um, by the whole money laundering process. And when you look at it in the larger sense, the whole three stories, what you see is a, a hole in the boat. You know, how can we have economies all over the world and people working at jobs and, and you know, and trying to be efficient in, in you know, in, in an, a, an economy setting when these guys are, you know, pulling it out from the bottom of the boat? That's what's happening. And, and what we don't realize, uh, and the movie helps us, and the three stories help us, is that um, the amount of money is fantastic. It's fantastic. It's in the billions and collectively in the trillions. And so we have a, a window on this. Let me add one more thought, George, if you don't mind. In various places around the world, these island communities that had no regulation, and the trick was to say no. Um, you know, this is not really what the Internal Revenue Service wants. Um, the trick was to uh, avoid these uh, these schemes, um, but they were out there, and they were pretty active back in you know the eighties, uh, maybe later, and they're probably active today. And this is a little window on not only the Panama Papers and Panama, but a number. And I mentioned in the movie there these these you know these islands you never heard of. Uh, which all they have is uh, the, uh, you know, a, a legal framework to establish uh, these empty, you know, terminable trusts. Um, and that's where this money goes from left to right and into the pockets of the scammers. Uh, and this movie is all about people scamming. So with that in mind, can you tell us the, the three plots that are involved? Actually, it's four plots because there's a wraparound plot involving the Ethan Allen. And what's remarkable is that the show just before this today uh, involved Ethan Allen, uh, a descendant of Ethan Allen of uh, New England fame, a revolutionary uh, hero. And the boat where this all starts, the movie all starts, the boat that capsizes, it's called the Ethan Allen. How about that for a coincidence? So there's actually four plots. 
It's the one that wraps around everything and tells you about Meryl Streep's adventures. And then it's the three stories of scamming. The, the main one is uh, Ellen Martin is played by uh, Meryl Streep. And the cameo role, her husband, James Cromwell, plays that. And they're on a boat on a lake. They're on a vacation. And the, the boat captain doesn't see something coming. And at the last minute, sees uh, something coming to hit him. So he makes a, a quick move. And the boat, uh, which is open, you know, it's, it's an open boat. Uh, it, it sort of collapse, goes on its side. And all these people fall into the water. And I think 16 people died out of the, out of the 40 on, on the boat, including her husband, played by James Crump. Then she... She's you know saddened by her husband's death, right? It's a funeral and everything. And she goes to her attorney because they're gonna gonna collect on a on a, a, a you know from the boat captain negligence, you know, whatever. So then they show the the what the one of the owners of the boat, uh, you know, the two owners in, in in a restaurant. They're sitting, and they have a restaurant too. And uh, they realize, you know, they that this insurance policy is bogus. Because they had an insurance policy that was sold to another Dell corporation, and when you have that, then it, it it's no longer valid. So so the, the the insurance is not valid. So she's up the creek. She's getting. I mean, I think the boat boat owner gives her a little bit of something. You know, they they're able to find a little few dollars for her, but nothing like what she should be getting right for the death of her husband. Right. The Second first day. plot. Um, is about how she goes down there. Do you remember? She she travels down there to she Panama. Travels to the, yeah, she travels to the island, and then she, she uh, sees this guy in the street, and she asks him about this guy with a certain name, and it's actually the guy. I think Nevis in the Bahamas, right? And he plays, plays like he doesn't know who he is, right? And he just walks away, but she's looking for him. And she goes to the he building. Lied, he lied to her. He lied. He denied that he was who she lied. thought he was. He basically lies to her like he doesn't know who this is. But it's, it's him, right? So then, um, you know, she wants to find out what's what's going on and, and whatever. And uh, little by little, she starts putting pieces together, you know, who's, who's who. And then she leads herself to these two attorneys, uh, Mossack Fonseca, which are real from the Panama Papers, right? And I won't talk about the rest because that 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 that's giving away the, 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 the okay. But in that, in that first uh, in that first segment, so to speak, uh, she leaves um, empty-handed and returns to Miami in the airport there. And in the airport, there's the same guy who denied that he was who he thought he was the manager of the company, and the law firm or one of the related companies, and. It's really interesting, and and the FBI is there, so it's uh, Meryl Streep, this guy, this creep, um, and I think his daughter was there too, right, in the airport meeting him, um, and and then it was the FBI, and they arrested him, and she's off a few feet away, smiling, and you know she knows now that somebody knows that that, that he's a scammer. And you don't know you're left. I was left. Maybe you had a different impression. I was left with the notion that Meryl Streep's character actually reported this guy to the FBI. And that's why they caught him. But you don't know for sure. Because she had his name and she went, she went to the office. So she knew something was both. Right? Yeah. So I think you're, you got it on, on the ball that she maybe alerted the FBI. She was smiling. She didn't say anything. She didn't. Stood there smiling, and oh, there's something more here than than just a passerby. And by the way, that pretty, was the F. That was the FBI. You know, all these sh- years we have loved the FBI, and we still love the FBI. By the way, and they came off pretty well in this movie. They came off in this movie looking good, which is which is good compared to the CIA in the last last movie we we reviewed with a. They're looking CIA. They look really bad. Look, the FBI looks really good. So yes, yeah, I was going to get into that. Scene. So so she's a pretty smart cookie. So there's more to this, and I'll get into that. 
But I'll talk about the second one. The African oh, yeah, guy. Well, I, I know. He's he got this mansion. The mansion. The mansion. Exactly. And, and, and exactly. he was like out of this world. He had so much money around him. You couldn't believe Beautiful it. Beautiful mansion. Yeah. And he's got his lovely young daughter. You know, she's very pretty. The teenager. I mean, the college student. And his elegant black, black wife, right? She's gorgeous. She's like a Jackie Kennedy kind of wife, you know? And And they've got this estate it's like something out of beverly hills you know the hills in the hills gorgeous estate and 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 he's shipping the the his daughter's college roommate come on you know i mean she's not she, she's not she's not a beauty you know not no. in my taste you know no. the daughter goes to the pool in the backyard way in the back and sees his, her father you know kissing the the her room her, her college roommate so she knows something's up. So then he's always ups- he's upset, and he's, he knows that his daughter saw this. So he's begging her not to say anything to the mother to create chaos in their house, right, in their family. It was a trust. He offered her a trust, a trust that it, somehow owned the business. And the was, business was, was worth 20, $20 million. Supposedly. But, but when she met with the, with the uh, who was handling the trust, I think it was Mossack Fonseca. The trust was worth nothing. So, so I mean, all these shell shell corporations and shell trusts, all a bunch and, of. And, wait, wait, and then she finds out that the, there had been previous uh, assignations, and he bought off his, his fancy wife too, and gave her a similar trust. Also, he said worth twenty million dollars, <laughs> and she was, and she had zero as well. So he used these, these scam trusts to pay people off and let them think it was worth 20 plus 20 or $40 million, and it wasn't worth anything. And that was the second story, how you can you know, pass this around and, and fake people out and scam them for huge amounts of money, while he himself, who was a, a principal in all this uh, scamming and money laundering, was living in this fabulous house. Can I go into the Chinese government? Right yeah, now? no, that that's actually the one that people know about. Basically, the Chinese government, the wife of the, of the, the high official, right? Bo, Bo yeah. Shi Lai. It was yeah. a very famous corruption case. She's another knockout, another beautiful Asian woman. I mean, that's an elegant, like the black wife of, of the other guy, really classy, classy woman, right? But she's really sly, you know? And of course, communist, communist government. So basically, there's this agent that, that works for them, this English guy, uh, and he goes to, to the house where the wife and the daughter are there. The wife is uncomfortable that he may reveal something, right? Or that his wife may, re- I mean, the wife of the agent might reveal something. And she asks him to divorce his wife. And he said, I can't divorce my wife, right? So she decides that he's got to be eliminated. So they, 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 her daughter, young daughter, teenage daughter, they give her him a, a drink of water, and it's with cyanide, and they kill him. He just goes and he, you know, he dies, right? And then eventually, the Chinese uh, authorities find out what's going on with this guy. She what? tells uh, either Bo Shi Lai or she tells the police. I don't remember um, that that she had to do. She had to do this to avoid a scandal. And the, the, I think it was the police recorded the conversation and turned it over to the government. And then the government took her down. Um, it was really ridiculous. The government took her. This is a true story, right? You know, this is what happened to the wife of Bo Shi Lai who killed somebody. And, and Bo Shi Lai was also involved in the corruption, maybe covering it up. I don't know. Um, and the two of them went down. Chinese government, right? Yeah. So, so uh, that, 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 was, that was the other... The third it was it was block, all right? about corruption, and That's the Chinese cool. government. You know, arguably Xi Jinping was trying to stop all this corruption, and this was one where they had the evidence um, that the corruption was in fact a murder uh, of a fellow who was going to turn her in, and that was enough to ruin the family. I mean, destroy the family. So, I mean, it's just another example, don't you think of? Um, corruption um, by virtue of these international uh, scam 
a money laundering trust. Uh, that was the most interesting because, you know, you know, we've heard about that one before. And probably the other two are also rooted in truth. Uh, if they're not, if they're not actual documentaries, they're, you know, romanticized or, you know, dramatic, dramatic documentaries. But I think they're all real cases. Yeah, this is ubiquitous. It's all, all around the world. It's getting the, the very rich, you know, protecting their assets and, and the little guy gets screwed, you know, like Ellen Martin, the, the Meryl Streep character gets screwed. Yeah. So the, the, so, so the, the, this is how it progresses. And then there's a surprise ending. Do you want me to discuss the surprise ending? Yeah, sure. Okay. Well, this wily Ellen Martin, played by uh, Meryl Streep, she decides to disguise herself as a Hispanic uh, receptionist or, or clerk, right? And she's able to be hired at, 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 this, at the firm of Mosek Fonseca, right? Who are these two Panama, Panama paper lawyers, right? Because the earlier woman who was doing this, I'm trying to remember, did she resign or I forgot exactly from the movie. So the, there, was a, there was a vacancy and she played the role pretty good and she got the job and then she was an insider. She disguised herself with padding and a wig and all kind of stuff. <laughs> and then she got all the inside dope, right? She knows what's going on, right? And then she, re then she passed this information on to the to the authorities, right? Well, to the newspaper, wasn't it? That was a reporter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sharon Stone was the reporter. Yeah, uh, so right, right. And and now, now it's public, and and uh, they and they dropped it on the FBI again. And yeah. before you know it, there's a, a trial. Uh, and these two guys, the two partners, they they were, you know, convicted. But after three months, they were they were let go because they some kind of loophole or whatever, you know. So they got off real easy, right? Easy. But um, but she, you know, at the end, they show uh, Ellen Martin, uh, which is uh, you know, taking off her wig, taking off the padding, and and then she she you know she won. She she got even. She got her revenge in the end. So. Um, uh, she goes and she plays uh, Martin in terms of putting the you know the uh, the disguise on, and she brings them down, and that's part of the movie. But then at the end, she expresses her own self, she expresses her view of this whole affair, and and the fact that it's happening globally and it involves huge amounts of money and buying influence everywhere, and so forth. And and it does suggest that the three month sentences those guys got, um, you know were really low, considering the amount of money they stole from people. Um, but it also, you know, implies, and by the way, they were not happy, these two guys, they were not happy with this movie. She he's, expresses her view uh, and the fact that they got away with it and the, and the fact that nobody's doing much about it. Um, and it's, it's global. So you don't have a global effort to try to stop them. Uh, and they're stealing, stealing a lot of money. And so who was your favorite actor or actress uh, in the movie, George? Because I have a specific view of this. You know, I really like Meryl Streep. I mean, I've always liked her. She's an ex unbelievably good actress. Gary Oldman, too, you know, uh, that he, he played, his German accent was a little put on, you know. It, it's sort of hard to believe, but, but, um, uh, I, I would say Meryl Streep. I mean, she played this role to a T. She's always real. She's an a actress par excellence. You know, she's no raving beauty, but she knows she, and she plays these roles wonderful. So I, I'll say Meryl Streep. That's a belabor the point. Okay, and and uh, Antonio Banderas was the name you were looking for. Oh yeah, right. right he played right, right. Uh, Gary Oldman's uh, partner. And I, I thought that he was uh, slightly weak in this movie. Uh, maybe it was supposed to be that way. And I, he, he didn't look as uh, robust uh, on the screen as he has in the past. You know, he's been a real leading man in the past. He, I wouldn't say he looked like a leading man in this one. 
Gary Oldman was my favorite. I mean, I like Meryl Streep, no doubt. She's had a tremendous career. But so is Gary Oldman. He's English, you know. He's an English actor. He has been in dozens and dozens of films. Um, and he has, he's one of the top box office draws in all of Hollywood. And, he, and he's so flexible. I first saw him in a movie called The Professional. And I said, this is a guy. It was, it was about, a, he, he played the role of a, uh, of a corrupted cop. But it was so terrific. Um, and this movie was really memorable. I've seen it more than once, which is something for me. Um, and uh, I, I believe that in this movie, he largely carried the movie. He carried the evilness, you know, of the money launderers. And he, and, he, and he made these really wry and cynical statements about how you do this. He was, the, he was the chief provocateur. He was the guy who set things up. He was the guy who was completely amoral about it. And I, I liked his German accent, actually, George. <laughs> Wait a minute. Who is this? What actor is doing this? And sure enough, Gary Oldman. <laughs> and uh, Antonio Gandera's character, Fonseca, he talked about he was originally uh, trying to be pro bono, help the poor, but then he realized that you know, there's, there's no end to this, so he decided to become a scam, scammer with, with uh, Oldman's uh, character. I looked at one review of this movie by a guy on online called Burke. I forget his first name. And Burke didn't particularly like the movie. And I want to tell you a little about what he said before I ask you what you thought, how you rated it. Um, Burke thought that, um, you know, that the direction, which was by a very famous director, but in this case, um, the, the way he handled the transition from reality to uh, drama, even, you know, comedy. There was comedy in this movie. There were very humorous things that happened. Um, really suggested he a lack of focus on his part. Uh, he, and Burke, Burke said that he would really have preferred if the movie had been all serious or more serious um, than, than it came out to be. Um, I, didn't, I didn't see that. I think there's always room to make fun. Um, and uh, he also said that the the three stories were too much, um, or actually four stories, and that it would have been a better movie uh, had there been fewer stories. It was more attention to the, you know, the reality of what happened and the connection. Um, on the other hand, in, you know, in contradistinction to that, I, I felt that um, each of the movies, that you had to work, you had to work, George, on finding the common denominator. You had to figure out uh, you know what was happening there in the airport. You had, you know, with um, with the the money manager. You had to figure out uh, what was going on in that in that island uh, where she visited. You had to figure out what the connection was uh, with that African guy with the with the mansion and the daughters and what that all meant and how that connects with the first story. And of course, the Boshi Lai incident. Her name was Gu, Mrs. G U Gu. Um, that was that was really interesting, but it was different, and it was hard to find a common denominator among all the three. So all I'm saying is, you have to work on this movie, and if you're using this movie as a statement, an educational experience for the viewer to learn about how money is laundered, sorry, but it didn't get there. It didn't get there, and so. Um, I don't necessarily agree with the way Burke put his his crit critique, huh? but I think it it could have been better in terms of showing us exactly how they moved the money around. Your so what is your what is your rating on this movie, George? Well, I'm going to give it a nine because I agree with the spirit in some ways. There's a little bit of kishy silliness, you know, in, in this movie, and I think it's a really serious subject. And then they they kind of did comedy and that. Mozart and Fonseca, you know, the, the, two, the two attorneys, how they think, it's sort of silly. You know, they, they're, they're depicted very silly. If you look at on Wikipedia, you'll see that the, the real guys were much more serious and more evil. You know, these, these two on the, in the movie, they sort of make them sort of cute, you know, in a, in a way, the personalities, and that bothers me because they're really evil. It's, these attorneys are real evil dudes. Yeah. You take a perfectly serious subject. Remember uh, 
Don't Look Up. We reviewed Don't Look Up. Um, that's really deadly serious. Um, and they were, you know, they were trying to put a, a, a cheery aspect on a, co a comedic aspect to it. And at the end of the day, you say, hmm, um, you know, that was really serious. I should be thinking much deeper than the surface of this movie. Um, and if they, if they were trying to do that, I think they were trying to do that in Laundromat, but I don't think they got there. I don't. I think you saw the, you know, the, the fluff of it, but you you didn't see the serious problem that we have globally. Um, so it doesn't. I would give it an eight point seven. How about that? An eight point seven. That's what I would give it. I'm sorry I can't give it a higher number. I love Meryl Streep and I and I love um, Gary Oldman. Um, but I can't, I can't go higher than that. And there may be more movies coming out, you know, about the Trump administration, about climate change, about some of these efforts that have uh, succeeded or failed, mostly failed, to try to correct the problems of the world. And they're going to be dealing with the same kind of combination of trying to make it popular, relatable to the viewership, but at the same time, educational, really profoundly educational. So we'll try to cover those, George. Thank you, George. Thank we'll you, see Jay. you next time. Keep watching. Keep watching. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.